Thank you. No, the names are just pouring in right now. Yes, I am. I, <laughs> I may have. Um, I see a lot of peeps coming in. I see. Okay, let's see. Oh, Nandish that wishes us all the best for the presentation. Hey guys. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> My laptop was like, you know what? I, I don't feel like waking up this early. And I was like, no, please just get up, get up. And I was like, just literally panicking right now. I swear, because it was just, oh my God, so stressful. I thought it was just not going to turn on. And <laughs> thankfully, here we are. Um, do you guys want to go ahead and start? I'm so sorry for keeping everyone in the chat waiting as well. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> fine. Fashionably yeah. late. We ready and to I go. <laughs> yeah, we were getting to know each other a little bit, so my Canada hat because um I'm passionate, so you know patriotic for a country I'm not from. <laughs> Speaking of which, Claudia, what's your poutine? Sh I shouldn't be giving any spoilers. Okay, okay. Before we start the live chat, I just want to let you guys know tomorrow is Canada Day, and I was supposed to wear a very fashionable poutine shirt. Poutine <laughs> is a traditional food from Canada that came from Quebec, and it's like fries with gravy and cheese curds. And I love that shirt, but I couldn't end up wearing it today. So I am wearing something somewhat patriotic. I'm wearing red, not as fun. I know, I'm so sorry to disappoint guys. I'll show the poutine shirt later. If you guys wanna see it in the next live chat, I can show it um, if I find it. Um, but <laughs> I have like a red shirt, so yeah. But I like your hat, Rani. It's very nice. Thank you. I had to pick it up from the children's section because they didn't have anything for like as small as me. I'm a really small person, so cool. Okay. okay. All righty, yeah. let's do it. Mm -hmm. So, hi everyone. I feel like we have met some of you already in the chat and some of you joined us last time. But if you did join us last time, you will remember that I am Claudia. I am going into my fourth year of arts and business and speech communications, and I am an international student from Honduras. So if anybody from Latin America there, comment in the chat below. Okay, hi again. My name is Rania. I'm, I'll be going into my second year of arts and business starting fall 2020. I'm majoring in economics and I'm doing a minor in law, and I'm from Pakistan. So also I see someone saying cool Star Wars poster. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Okay, so unfortunately uh, our co-host Nathaniel had to leave our team suddenly for some personal reasons, but we want to introduce you to Keelan who will be stepping in. Keelan, introduce yourself to the audience. That's a lot of pressure and I should probably get myself <laughs> a Star Wars poster. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will. Anyway, hello, bonjour. My name is Keelan Bramalek. Keelan Brown, like my apologies. Even I have trouble with my first name sometimes. Um, I am an incoming master's student of the Environment Resources and Sustainability Program. And I'm also one of last year's um, live chat hosts. I was born in Canada, but I've lived all of my life in France and Trinidad. So I do share a lot of the concerns, experience, and shared by a lot of international students. And I think that my experience in the past has contributed to the um, to other international students um, being able to adapt and settle into this new environment. So I will be stepping in for Nathaniel at this point in time and for today's live chat and for next week's live chat as well, next week live chat as well. Oh, cool. Probably you're in my cutting a bit. Can you guys hear me and like see me yeah, properly? Okay, cool. Because like my, okay, I like my last house doing really stupid things. Okay. So um, thank you so much for introducing yourself, Keelan. And I think like in order to get to know each other better and for the audience to get uh, to know um, us, I think we should start off with a good old round of two truths and a lie. What do you guys say? That sounds fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. small pressure, but let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'll start. So the first one is my grandfather is an actor in Pakistan. The second one is I can play the electric guitar. And the third one is that my favorite movie is Pulp Fiction. Which one is a lie? Do you want to go first, Claudia? Do you want to guess first? Yeah, um, I would say that your grandfather isn't 
a famous movie star from mm -hmm. Pakistan. Okay. What about you? And I will say that you cannot play the electric guitar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Keelan is correct. I cannot play the electric guitar. And some people were even like in the comments going like, oh, your favorite movie. No, my favorite movie is Pulp Fiction. There's a poster right there on the wall. So yeah, and my grandfather is an actor in Pakistan. So if you guys like ever, anyway, that's a great party trick. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Keelan corrected. Good job. Yes, so, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Okay, um, I'll go next. So, let's see. Okay, I don't know how to ride a bike. That's the first one. Um, second of all, I can speak four languages. And then three, I am a professional ice skater. Which one do you guys think is a lie? Given that you are uh, from Central America and it's pretty warm, um, chances of having like an ice rink in those countries, I think it's pretty low. So I probably will go with that one. Okay, what about you, Rania? Sorry, just give me a second. Um, can you guys uh, hear me or am I like cutting? Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, cool. Um, so, okay, honestly, I don't think it would be as obvious as like the ice skater thing. So, um, I'll probably go for the four languages. Okay, so I see Rania, I see Parth and Amir also agreed with you, Rania, about the four languages, but unfortunately, the lie is that I am a professional ice skater. I feel like the majority of the comments got that right. Keelan did as well. Um, you are right, Honduras is a very warm, tropical country. So definitely did not get an ice to ice, like a chance to ice skate until I came here. So I'm not good at all. I fall within seconds. <laughs> That's something that you and I have in common, actually. You know, I used to be a you know, big fan of ice skating back in France. And then uh, being in Trinidad, of course, I didn't have a lot of opportunity to ice skate as much. And when I kind of got back at ice skate, uh, lots of bruises, but that's, that's what, uh, that's a sign of growth, experience and, and falling and then getting, getting off again, dusting off the ice. Okay, my turn. So, number one, I've been to the Amazon forest. I have an elder sibling and I like every combination of mint and chocolate. Let's see. Okay, so I feel like last time, um, mm -hmm. Ron was like the like the cool different fact was true. So I'm gonna say that the Amazon rainforest is true. I say that the the love all mint chocolate combinations is a lie. Which if it is. I don't know how, because mint chocolate is the best flavor of ice cream ever, but I feel like that one's the lie. Okay. What about you, Rania? What do you reckon? Okay. I'll have to agree with Claudia, because um, I personally detest mint chocolate. I do not like it at all. I think, um, like, totally not my favorite. And I think, like, all combinations is such a long shot. So I'm going to go for that one. So I'm looking at the comments and a lot of persons at first were guessing that it was the Amazon rainforest and then persons are going down the popular route, which is the non popular route, which is the mint chocolate. And you know, so the thing is, I detest any form of mint and chocolate combination. For me, those are two things that do not go well together and should not go well together. So I see Claudia shaking her head in disapproval and Rania is just is fully understanding the connection we're having right now because I don't like I don't like it at all. I do have another brother who lives in Trinidad right now. And I've been to the Amazon rainforest for a couple of weeks for work and vacation purposes back in February. And let me tell you, it was a fantastic experience. So now that we shared a fun fact about us, we want to know a fun fact about you all. 
our audience. So you can let us know by clicking the speech bubble button on the chat. And yeah, just drop down a fun fact about you guys and we'll be really happy to read some of some comments uh, that you provide to us. And make sure to forget all participants so that everyone can see your great answers. Yes. Also, okay, so in our first live chat, for those who joined us, um, if you guys remember, in our last time we chatted, we talked about uh, traveling to Waterloo, the new Waterloo Pre Ready program, um, immigration consulting and housing, and we really hope that this could help you feel more confident with your transition into Waterloo and more prepared because that's why we're here. We want to make you feel prepared and ready for your new journey in U U Waterloo. Um, and okay, so today for this second live chat, we're going to be discussing um, getting involved in campus. So how to get involved, um, adjusting to a new culture and all of the programs that are here for you to help you ease your transition. And again, just like last time, send in your questions, like Keelan said, in the chat, and make sure to be messaging all participants. So there's an option that says send to. Make sure to send in to all participants so everybody can see your comments and your questions, and we can all chat with each other. And then if you're having any technical difficulties, you can message the Ask Us panelist. She's here, she's saying hi. Hello, she is the Ask Us panelist, and she'll be helping you out. And finally, um, we want you guys to see us properly and to have like the full live chat experience. So in the video window, if you hover, hover over to the top right corner, you will see that there is a grid view option. So you can see us in a grid view. Um, so click it um, so you can see us in a grid view and you'll have like a better live chat experience and you'll be able to see us all in the same screen. Cool. So uh, Keelan asked you guys earlier that um, you know, share a fun fact about yourself. And I already see so many cool things down in the chat. So Yash says that, um, fun fact, I can move my ears without touching them. And it's pretty cool. And Priyanshi and Jaden can do the same. And then Rohit says, I like jazz. That's honestly, there's like a lot of people who do like jazz over here. So I think you'll fit right in. Um, and Natalie says, I've twisted my ankle multiple times while playing basketball while wearing ankle braces. That's pretty cool. Ouch. Honestly, thank Ouch. you. Thank you guys so much for. Okay, can you guys like hear me or am I like cutting way too much? No, no you're, you're doing great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because like what happens on my end is that like the screen temporarily like goes a bit blank and then I'm just like, oh my God, am I freezing as well? Okay, that was like my. Sorry, I see, like, honestly, like, so many people are, like, okay, so, yeah, so many people are, like, you know, going um, down in the comments. Fun fact, I like to sleep. I love that. I literally love that so much. Okay, so, um, thank you guys well, so much you. for participating, and, right, sorry? So, so before, before you go on to the uh, territorial acknowledgement, I just have to mention the prize giveaway. Um, oh, so right, sorry, that, my bad. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, yeah. Um, yeah. So just like last time, uh, my fellow international students, we'll be having another grand prize giveaway. And today's prize would be a UW mug and also a notebook set that will be provided by the Student Success Office from the U Waterloo store on campus. So stay tuned to the end to find out how you could win that prize. Thank you, Rani. Sorry for cutting you. Yeah, no, so, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> because of the technical difficulties that I'm having, which is like, Seriously, like out of nowhere, I feel like you guys have already said a certain part and then I'm just like, oh my God, should I like say my part? So yeah, I just panicked. Won't be no, happening with you. You're good. You're doing great. All right. Thank you. Okay. So um, we want to start off with the territorial acknowledgement, which is a way to recognize the indigenous people of Canada. If you missed our first live chat, this will be unfamiliar to you. But we wanted to introduce you to territorial acknowledgements before you came to Canada, as it is an important part of University of Waterloo, especially because tomorrow is Canada Day. Um, and uh, honoring, uh, you know, 153 years of Canadian Confederation. So although like it's, you know, it's been it's been absolutely like, you know, years, there's hundreds of years, the First Nations, the Inuit and the Metis people have a long history as the first peoples of this land. We're talking centuries. 
Um, on that note, we want to acknowledge that right now we are sitting on the, ter on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. The University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldimand Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes 10 kilometers on each side of the Grand River. We believe it is important to publicly acknowledge the original inhabitants of the land as a step towards reconciliation. Thank you, Rania. Yeah, Thank tomorrow is Canada Day, so you guys want to, if you guys want to like research more about it, there's definitely a lot of cool history and a lot of things that happen during Canada Day, a lot of celebrations. And if you're already in Canada, you can um, enjoy the fireworks. I know that in Waterloo, there are some fireworks shows happening. Um, I don't know if they're still happening, but they usually happen. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, I have a question for both of you um, regarding our like next um, section of the live chat. I wanted to know, what are some of your favorite things to do on campus? Hmm. For me, it will definitely be the Mambo Clubs Salsa, the Mambo Club Salsa and Bachata classes that have allowed me to express myself in a very dynamic and rhythmic manner. And it's also a terrific way to expand your social circle. So definitely the Latin dancing. So yeah, mm -hmm. something I like, yeah. Well, what about you, Anya? Um, I was um, like, oh, sorry, Claudia, I was supposed to go to Claudia, so. My bad. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I feel like we're all excited. We all want to share that. that. Um, I would say that for me, definitely like going to the SLC. The SLC for those, um, for everybody, um, is the Student Life Center, which is the building that is located at the middle of the university. And inside of the building, there's like a lot of food services. WUSA, um, the Waterloo Undergrad Student Association, which we're going to talk more about later, is also situated there. There's a lot of things going on all the time. And it's definitely a meetup spot for many. So I love going to the SLC because I always see a familiar face. It's the place where if you're going in between classes, if you're going after class, you'll definitely see somebody you know. Um, like I said, whether it is like a person you saw in class once and you say hi to, or like that friend that you haven't seen in a couple of weeks, or a friend from your bachata class, maybe um, you'll see you'll see almost everyone and anyone. So it's definitely one of my favorite things to do. Just go there in between classes, see some of my friends, see some new people. Um, yeah. What about you, Rania? Honestly, Claudia, I'll have to agree with you. I also really love the Student Life Center because I think like literally there's everything to do over there. And usually because um, I didn't want to go all the way back to your residence to, you know, um, eat food and like rest up so I would just go to SLC because I would usually just have classes later and I'd grab food I'd sit with my friends and usually we'd like go to the third floor and study together so it was like it, it was it's it's a really good hangout spot and I'm really looking forward for um you know going back there soon hopefully so um bringing it back to everyone down in the comments uh we want to know what is your favorite hobby that you would like to continue at the University of Waterloo down in the comments, make sure to select all participants. All righty, and speaking of hobbies, now is a great time to introduce Laura Lee from Athletics and Recreation and Nada from the Waterloo Undergraduate Student Association, that's WUSA, to talk about ways to get involved on campus. And while we're talking to them, if you have any questions during the interview, please leave them in the comments and we will get to them at the end of the interview. And also remember, like we've told you, to send in your questions and comments and everything to all participants so we can all see your questions. On, the, on that note, um, thank you so much for joining us, Larley and Nada. Could you introduce yourselves um, to the audience and tell us about your favorite activity on campus? Hi, my name is Laura Lee, and I'm representing the Athletics and Recreation. And my favorite campus activity would have to be playing tennis with my friends. Hello, so my name is Nada and I'm your Vice President of Student Life at the Waterloo Undergraduate Student Association, also known as WUSA. And um, one of my favorite hobbies, um, basically just, yeah, going to the SLC and, and staying there and um, um, meeting, meeting my friends there and my coworkers and speaking of coworkers and the SLC, I'm actually in the SLC right now. Um, this is my office um, because I had to come into work today. 
So um, once everything is good to go on campus, feel free to come up to my office and just drop by and say hi. Awesome. Okay, um, and can you tell us a little bit more about the services you guys offer to U Waterloo students? Yeah, so as an undergraduate student, um, you're automatically a member of the Waterloo Undergraduate Student Association. And so um, what WUSA offers for all students on campus um, are a lot of um, services. So we actually have 11 services. Um, uh, four commercial services that include international news, which is um, the campus convenience store that's also located um, in the SLC, as well as about more than 250 clubs on campus. And so um, there's a lot to do um, with WUSA. And um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. So the athletics department usually offers a range of activities, which includes sports clubs that you can join. You can buy a fitness pass to attend fitness classes that include yoga, um, Zumba, there are also intramural sports that you can join. So if you want something more competitive, you can um, also participate in dancing clubs and stuff like that. That's on the looser side. Um, however, given recent circumstances, COVID and quarantining, virtual opportunities have been made available. So these will include online classes, fitness classes, webinars, personal training, personal nutrition. Another great program to get involved in would be Move Your Mind. So whether that you sign up online and you you speak to a coordinator, Move Your Mind coordinator, and you tell them your goals, what your interests are, and you, every week you would get newsletters about what's going on this week, some motivation and accountability for those who want to get involved. That's fantastic. And, I, and we all really appreciate and recognize the work that the university is doing through the athletics and recreation department to promote physical activity and, you know, get staying active because that plays a huge role in the holistic development and also progress of a university students. So thank you so much for that. And we would, also, we would like to also know how can international, international students specifically, specifically, sorry, how can they get involved? So if you live on campus, how international students would get involved is you would go to the club fair and you would sign up for the different sports clubs or you can go to the different facilities such as the gym or the swimming pools or the basketball courts course on campus. But for now, how you can get involved would you you would go to the GoWarriorsGo.ca slash online rec website where you can find more ways to get involved. Um, for example, you can find the Move Your Mind form and you can also follow at WLU Rec on Rec on Instagram for more updates and information. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we do offer over um, 250 um, clubs on campus, and so um, um, if you go to the WUSA.ca um, website, you'd be able to see kind of a um, a list of all the clubs that we offer um, and that are active um, during a particular term. And also look out for an online um, campus life fair uh, where we'll tell you what clubs there are, um, kind of a, a more focused um, event on, on what clubs are running and what services are running. Um, and in particular, I want to highlight a, a specific service that's called the International and Canadian Student Network. Um, we call it ICSN just for short. And so uh, what ICSN offers is that um, it, it kind of offers that community for international students to be able to, to connect and, and feel um, kind of more connected with, with Canadian students and on campus. And so some of the things that ICSN um, have throughout the year are, for example, Niagara Falls um, trips or uh, even the Elmira Maple Festival. Um, so yeah, definitely look out for that. And another service that I want to highlight is RAISE. And that is a very, very useful um, service to get involved with or even just reach out to um, if you ever need someone to talk to um, or if you just want to share your racialized um, student experience. Oh, yeah, I feel like those are some great resources for me as an international student. I feel like one of the ways that I loved getting involved on in campus was with the clubs uh, from Musa. Like Nada explained, there are so many clubs offered. Um, in my second year, I had the opportunity to be an executive of the Association of Latin American Students, which is a club to, you know, 
meant to raise awareness of Latin American culture. And it was such an amazing opportunity. I got to meet so many new people and just basically form part of campus, get to get to meet people from outside the club um, and everybody that was interested in the culture or the music and everything was also a very, um, definitely a good experience. And also I feel like it's important to note that there are clubs for everyone. So maybe Latin American culture isn't your thing, but there's definitely a thing for everybody. There's like a cheese club, a waffle club. Um, there's a club for almost everything or everything and anything. So definitely there's something for you. Um, and if there isn't, you can always make your own club. So yeah, definitely a resource that I would recommend everybody to check out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just like Claudia mentioned, there's like a club for everyone. So for me, honestly, I think um, when I joined the uh, Pakistan Student Association and the Muslim Student Association as well, so no matter how far away I was from home, um, I kind of felt like home was with me because I had people from my community. Um, and um, sorry, can you guys hear me or? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Am I cutting you out a bit? You're good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, my bad. Cause like my, me. Oh, you're like, yeah, you're not. Okay. So, um, Oh, yeah, she's buffering. We'll give her a minute to get set back up. That's no problem. I guess I could speak about my experience real quickly um, when it comes to, you know, uh, so speaking of um, clubs, especially when it comes to cultural clubs, one of the things I looked for when I got here was uh, to find and establish a sense of home, um, being away from home especially, and I saw that there was a Caribbean Students Association. And this will be of interest for all the Caribbean students uh, in the chat right now. There's a community of, of uh, Caribbean students on campus, and it's a great way to you know, meet other students from our region, the Caribbean region, in order to integrate yourself in this wider community. Yeah. Hi, Rania, you're back. Yeah, sorry about that. I have no idea what's going on with my laptop. It's quite a last minute issue. And if it continues, then I'll probably like leave and like rejoin again. So that's okay. Were you telling us you were telling us about your uh cool. So uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So right. So obviously like you mentioned, um, you know, there's something for everyone at U Waterloo. And um, you know, I like particularly because like I'm from Pakistan. So for me, I was like joining in to the Pakistan Student Association and the Muslim Student Association as well, because I was like uh, part of both those communities. And um, no matter how far away I was from home, I kind of felt like a part of home was with me because I was like within my community. And um, yeah, it was just a really, really cool thing to experience. So I'd really like to turn to Nada and uh, Laura Lee, and I'd like to ask you guys, what are some benefits of getting involved in your activities? Yeah, so um, getting involved on campus or, or any sort of club or service um, really expands your network in terms of um, meeting new people. So meeting upper years um, who can give you some tips while within your undergraduate career or meeting um, first years um, and friends. And so um, it really helps with that as well. Um, you can get um, job experience because um, with WUSA, we do have um, a bunch of retail services. And so um, you can always apply um, for those jobs and you can always get those jobs and, and be able to build your resume and even um, kind of expand on your employer network as well. So um, definitely, definitely um, recommend getting involved on campus because you never know. Um, you you might just uh, come across something that'll help you along the way. For me, one of my favorite things would have to be meeting new people and experiencing different cultures because as an international myself, I can really appreciate people from different backgrounds. So 
having that opportunity to meet other people and then form relationships via a bond that you have in common, in common, such as I play tennis, so I like all my tennis friends and meeting new people from there. Or if you go to the gym, there are a lot of people that are friendly. So besides the physical benefits, there's also a lot of social benefits that come from it. And then it's also very good to take a break from studying because, you know, you don't want to look back at, uni at your university experience and think, oh, I only study, you would like remember the memories of when you went to play basketball with your friends, or if you went to the park with your friends to take a little walk. So my favorite is definitely building relationships and friendships with the people in my club. Yeah, it's so true, you know, coming, going off of the, especially the part you're talking about, you know, staying physically active, you know, it's helped me, well, staying physically active has gotten me and has it, and also my involvement within the athletics and recreation department has helped me tremendously to remember that university is not only about academia, but it's also about building relationships, networks, and also establishing a sense of community within the university. Yeah. Okay. So I see that there have there has been some interaction going on in the chat. So I'm gonna look at all of that first. And in a while back, we asked you about uh, your favorite hobbies. Um, so we're, I'm gonna read them out loud, what you guys put in first. So there's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of comments. So, okay, Jithin said playing chess. Tani said photography. Priyanshi and Tanisha said photography and basketball. So definitely talk to each other. You both seem to have a lot in common. Um, Neha, Niha and Nandini said dancing. Kyle said table tennis. Yash said basketball and tennis. So definitely you're going to be interested in the Waterloo Rec program. Uh, Alexandria said singing. Sahaj and Martin said music. Aisha said sketching. Christian Zian said band. No Davina said taking pictures. Sagun said play sitar. Kyle and Jithin said chess. Irfan said soccer. I feel like there's a very diverse and like answers um, in average, which I love. I love that everybody has their own thing and their own hobbies. I see that Nandini said art and room decor. So Rania, I feel like you guys have a lot in common. Rania has a ton of posters. So many. Oh my god. Um, okay, let's see what else. Paranjai said football and basketball. Samya said photography and dance. And Viraj said soccer and photography. Sophie said rock climbing. I feel like that one's a very cool one. Anmal said badminton and working out. Amir said skateboarding with a ton of exclamation marks. I love that. I love the enthusiasm. Arnav said art and lawn tennis. Arbra, Abrar said cricket and football. Chloe said dancing and cheerleading. Samia said painting. Parth and Vic Vibhak. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing any names. Like I said, guys, let me know in the chat. Feel free to correct me. Um, they said badminton. Shreya said tennis. I see a lot of tennis. There's a UW tennis club, I believe. So definitely be checking that one out for all of you tennis lovers. Um, Erwin said mountain climbing. Sonal said backpacking or trekking. Stefan said running. Nandish said badminton, cricket, and volleyball and more. And OK, let's see. I'll read like three or four more because there's a ton of responses. So I'm so sorry if I don't get to yours. Um, I'll, Guangzong said parkour. That's a cool one. Yeah, that's, that's a very cool party trick and a hobby as well. I feel like it's, you are automatically cool. If you parkour, you're the coolest person ever. Um, and I see Natalie and Viraj said they play flute as well. So definitely some great answers. I see a ton of diversity, a ton of cool and, and creative hobbies. So definitely start talking to each other in the comments below if you see somebody that has a common hobby and you already have somebody to do stuff with when you come to Waterloo. Okay, and like I said, I have um, a lot of responses, but I wanna get to the questions as well. So let's see. Okay, so the first question we have is from Priyanshi. They ask, how can I join the women basketball varsity team? So I'm gonna give that one to Laura Lee. 
Okay, so I also saw a lot of comments asking about the, how to join varsity. So on the athletics recreation page, on the homepage for the athletics, and under the, you have like a header bar with like different sections you can click on. You can click inside athletics and there's a student athlete section where you can click on that there's a form that you got, can actually fill out and submit and you can choose what sport you're interested in to play varsity and then you just send it through and I'm assuming somebody will like get back to you. So there's a form online. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I see Tanisha asked, is live chat one recording available? So yes, all of the live chats are being recorded and you'll be able to see them. They will be posted in the International Student Guide, guide in August. So check the International Student Guide um, around that time if you are interested in looking at the live chats and looking at our lovely um, hosts and interviewees. Uh, Jacqueline said, will all the club activities continue to run this fall? Nada, what would you say? Yes, so uh, club activities will run during the fall term. Um, for now, they're all going to be online. Um, but um, as soon as we hear anything new from the government regulations about in-person activity, um, of course, we're, we're going to have that communicated. And I just want to, um, to kind of outline something. Um, some of our clubs are usually um, active or not active during a particular term. So, for example, I know someone um, mentioned backpacker, um, like their hobbies is, is backpacking. Um, and we have a backpackers association. It's actually a club. So let's say the backpackers association decided to be active in the fall term, then they're going to be operating. But uh, let's say the students don't have much time and can't be active in the winter term, then that won't necessarily um, happen. But that doesn't mean that other clubs aren't active as well. So it really depends on the particular club. But short answer, yes, all club all club operations are going to be um, resuming. Awesome. Okay, so Darth asked, how do I get a WAT card? Um, I don't know if anybody feels comfortable um, answering that one. Yeah, I could. Like, yeah, I just remember that, like, as soon as you arrive on campus, make sure you, that um, whoever is driving you or wherever you are, uh, make sure to stop at the Student Life Center. And as soon as you go, there's signs actually on, like, literally every pillar or, wall, or like, on, on, like, a wall that tells you where you can go to go and get a walk card, which is on the ground floor at the UW store. So you can, you guys can like uh, just go and get your walk card immediately made because that's exactly what I did as soon as I came to campus, which is so super funny because um, I came from straight from like a, like 20 hours of traveling with like no sleep. So like immediately like coming to, you know, getting my walk card picture taken, I kind of looked a little bit insane in my picture, but it's fine. So yeah, you guys can just get it from the SLC. Awesome. Okay. So I see that we have time for questions. So Arnav said, do we have to pay some kind of fees for athletic programs? Laura Lee? Well, if you want to join the gyms and the facilities, then you have a membership that's automatically charged to your account when you're paying tuition to get access to these facilities. But if you want to join clubs, I know for some sports clubs, you have to pay a membership fee. Um, so, for example, boxing, you have to like pay the coaches. Um, I know for tennis to rent the court, it'll be $25 a semester. But yeah, it's just one flat fee at the beginning, and then you get access to like whichever sports club you want to be a part of. And also, um, Laurie, could you give a quick mention of the shoot target classes once those will be available? How, does, how do the shoot target classes work? So, the shoot tag. Uh, it's basically a tag that you put on your sneakers and it basically identifies you as a person who is um, eligible to join the classes and the classes would be yoga, there's Zumba, there's Pilates and it's, there's a roster posted on the Waterloo website, the Atlanta Recreation website and it tells you okay from 9am to 10am there will be Zumba from 11am to 12pm there will be um, cycling. So it's a very flexible and it's a flat fee of $50 a semester. Well, as the last time I remember, it'll be $50 for the entire semester. And it gives you access to all of these classes at various times. 
So you can fit in any classes throughout the week, whenever you feel like it, whenever you have time. Perfect. Awesome. Um, I see that Ambush asked about the available list of clubs that will be in Waterloo this fall. And how can they know more about all these clubs and how do I join them? So our lovely Ask Us panelist has included a link in the chat to the, all of the list of the clubs at Waterloo. So definitely check those out. Arnav posted the list as well. Thank you, Arnav. So definitely check that list out to see all of the resources, or sorry, all of the clubs that are available for you guys to join. And then Kunwar said, is there a gym? Yes, technically there is, there are four gyms in total, if I'm correct. There is the Columbia Icefield gym. Um, there is also gyms on residence. So there is a gym in the Ronade Village or Rev residence, and there is one in the Claudette Miller Hall or the CMH building in UWP. And there is also the PAC. I forget what PAC stands for. If any physical of activities know. complex. Thank you so much. Yes, physical You're activities. Great. <laughs> I feel like I always forget that one, but that one's um, next to SLC. So there's definitely a gym for everyone. Uh, Sahaj, Sahaj said, is rest safe for fall season? So definitely the university is trying to keep um, everything up to health standards and everything safe for you guys. So that is why we are um, asking for everybody to self quarantine and self isolate for 14 days prior to coming to residence. Um, there will definitely be measures taken for you guys to have a safe environment. Um, there will be some, like social distancing and physical distancing measures being put as well. Uh, NR said, where to find doctors, dentists, et cetera, when we move? Um, if I can answer that one quickly, I, there are there is the health services building on campus, which is a building for any medical concerns that you might have. There are doctors there that you, you make an appointment or you go for uh, just like regular walk-in appointments if you need any help of any sort. So definitely there is a building for you on campus called Health Services, which is just on the opposite side of the SLC, so crossing the road. Um, Laura said, will ice skating be available on campus this fall? Laura Lee. I'm actually not sure if it will be available this fall. But you can check online and they'll probably have something posted on it about this as well. Definitely, if you guys are interested in everything, because things are a little different this year, um, we may not have all the answers to all of it, but definitely check out the websites. There will be a lot of information posted as soon as, as, soon as there's a plan set. So, okay, Ambush said, what specific medical services are there in Waterloo? Okay, so. Pretty broad question. Well, you do have, um, so as you mentioned, we do have the campus dentist available on campus. Once public health allows, public health guidelines allow, that office will be open. You have also a lot of clinics, various clinics around the uh, the Waterloo, well, around the Waterloo area that do actually accept coverage that the Waterloo Undergraduate Students Association provides. So that's something that you could definitely take advantage of. And uh, there's also the uh, Grand River Hospital in Kitchener, which is close by. I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that. That's the extent of my knowledge on that in the area. I feel like that's that's great. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. Well, you will have all of your needs covered definitely. Um, Tanisha and Ambush uh, were asking about first year fall orientation 2020. Rania, um, do you want to tell them about what we're what we know. Sure. Uh, so basically right now at the moment, um, orientation will be carried out online. And of course, um, please get uh, familiar with the Waterloo Ready program that is in uh, our online training tool, Learn. So just make sure you guys check that out and any information about online orientation will be sent to you in your emails. Um, I see that Sula is asking about counseling and mental health services and asking if they will be available for those who won't be on campus this semester. Um, from what I know, I, 
I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that there are tons of services that they offer remotely as in person as well. Um, there are some services such, for example, UW Mates, which is a great way to get um, some support on campus. So definitely um, check that out and try to, if you need any help, you can always reach out. There's always a resource available for you on campus. And then Neha said, will the effects of COVID not being able to be in Waterloo physically make the transition harder in terms of making friends and joining clubs? Um, I don't know if Keelan or Rania wants to share their input on that. Right, absolutely. Um, so one of the things I thought was gonna happen to me and quite a few other people is that given the, the impact that COVID has had on uh, socializing, on everyone socializing life basically, Everyone thought it would have been uh, true, uh, very much negative. And I know that Claudia and Rana could probably attest the, I mean, I invited them to, we did a socially distanced meet, meet up at the park, at Waterloo Park yesterday. And we've also taken advantage of the warm weather and we meet a lot of young people who are there as well, who are trying to deal with the situation accordingly. And it's actually helped a lot of persons develop a, you know, even better social skills because we are forced to go out there and really try to get out of our heads in a sense uh, because everyone is basically dealing with the situation one, in one way or the other. So I would definitely say that, yes, it will probably be a bit more difficult as if incoming first year students who, who would come here and, and be in a completely different environment. But, you know, in the quiet and in all of that, you'll actually be, it will be an opportunity for you to grow. And trust me, it will also be it will also serve you as a great asset in the future. So if you could go through that one semester, hopefully, um, and develop that resilience, and also you'll pretty much, I'm pretty certain also that you will meet other students who are in the same situation as you are as an international student, you will be absolutely fine. And then we will be around. We will be around, right? What about yeah. you, Rania? Yeah, um, I'll pretty much have to say the same thing because, um, for me, I don't think it's going to be that difficult because technology has made things really easy for us to connect and, um, you know, find any services that we need. And uh, Uwaterloo has done a pretty good job at transitioning pretty much everything online. Because I remember that as soon as like COVID hit, everyone had to immediately like go online and um, the transition was quick and it was actually carried out really well. So I actually ended up um, improving my grades as, um, you know, a result of some of my classes going online. So yeah, um, it, it's not going to be harder. It's going to be different. So you know, it's just it's just that, but we are all adjusting, and we're kind of like uh, low on time a bit. So I think we should move on to like the next step. We will um, just answer a couple that we have here, um, and we will move on. But yes, we're running a little bit short in time. Okay, so. Let's see. Nandish asked, hi, Laura Lee, are you an international student? If yes, where are you from? Which program and year do you study? Okay, so I am an international student and I'm from Trinidad, like you are. I just never said anything. Um, I'm studying <laughs> on <honors> mathematics. <laughs> yeah, I'm in on mathematics. I'm in my 2B term. Laura, so I actually noticed that you were from Toronto, like at the start of this live chat, because the first time I didn't hear you speak properly, like uh, I didn't hear you as clearly as now, and I kind of contained my excitement. So I was, um, I was like, just keep it together, Kila. <laughs> we can talk probably about that after. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Nandini is asking: Is there specific guidelines for quarantine? Do we have to quarantine at the government facility? So for all of that information, check the coronavirus website at the university for all of the quarantine updates. Things will be changing over time, so be sure to keep on top of that website too, so you know the latest um, regulations and latest news on it. Then you then said, for international students who plan on not attending the fall semester, how do they acquire textbooks required from classes? So all of the questions that you have regarding textbooks, whether on um, whether you want to buy them or not, um, whether they're online or not, they will all be uh, this will all be instructed by your instructors. So this will probably be told in the first week of classes or on your syllabus. So definitely check it out. They'll let you know if textbooks are required. 
um, or if there are optional or if there are any preferred methods of acquiring it. So whether it's online or not and all about prices as well, because I saw some questions about that. So definitely this is that one's for the instructors and their preferences um, for the course. Um, I also see from Nandish, where is Waterloo Ready? Where is the Waterloo Ready program available? So check your email. You will receive an invitation for uh, joining the Waterloo Ready, and you will also be receiving all of the further instructions there. And then from Arnav Gupta said, my course honors mathematics and business administration co-op will be available. Will it be available on campus? So um, I'm guessing all the services will be offered on campus as they are um, like, I'm sorry, like on online. Um, any services that will be offered on campus, you will, you will let, like you will know on time. Like I said, if you check the coronavirus um, website, you'll be able to see what um, services will be offered and just all about that. And then last one by Nishan said, when is the last date to pay the fees? Um, the, so the fall due date for any fees is August 25th, um, 2020. So you can keep track of all the deadlines by visiting the important dates calendar, which is found on the registrar's office page. The Ask Us panelist is putting the link on the chat right now. So definitely check that calendar out. It'll tell you all about course selection periods, um, uh, fees, due dates, exam periods, all of that information. Okay. So that was a ton of questions. Again, we're so sorry if we couldn't get to yours. We will definitely, um, if there are any questions by the end of the live chat, we may have time to answer them. If not, um, you can always reach out to us and we will answer them if you guys want to, um, or we can answer them in the next live chat. So before we finish up this section, Laura Leonada, are there any last things that you guys want to mention to international students? Yeah. So. Um... I would tell you to make the most out of your time here and um, reach out to the services, um, reach out to clubs and um, just make sure to create those connections. And um, I know that there are a lot of other other questions and um, WUSA isn't only about clubs, it's, it's about a lot more. So if you have any questions, please, please reach out to me. Um, I'll drop my email in the in the chat box and I hope you have a great day. Oh, I would say that, like, don't be afraid to try new things. You have everything to gain, you know, new friendships, and especially if you're not going to be in here in school, to so just take advantage of all the resources available to you. And I will also drop my email in the chat if you'll have any questions regarding athletics and recreation, or just any questions in general. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for all of the information that you provided us. And I also want to mention one thing that Nada said. She said to make the most out of your time at UW. And that's something I could definitely vouch for. Because, you know, we come to the university in order to get a university degree or master's degree or whatnot. But we also have to, we also need to realize that it's not only about academia. We only not grow by you know, accumulating knowledge through academia, but also through the interaction and the people that we meet. And you will form a lot of bonds that will last, you know, a very long time with the people who are surrounding you, especially with other international students who share the same um, concerns and uh, yeah, the same concerns as you are, as you as you have, sorry. So thank you so much, Nada and Laura Lee. That was once again, Nada from the Waterloo Undergraduate Students Association and Laura Lee from the Athletics and Recreation Department. Thanks for coming by. See you soon, hopefully. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, cool. So, you know, that was some great insight. And I actually, like, even as like an existing student, I am, I've already learned so much from just, uh, you know, that interaction. So, um, you know, from everyone in the comments, some of you might be traveling to Waterloo and some of you might be staying back at home. So we'd like to ask you, have you ever lived abroad before? Uh, we're going to be talking about adjusting to a new uh, culture and a new environment, and we'd really like to hear about your experiences down in the comments. So once again, make sure to select all participants when you are using the chat box. Okay, so I think like 
one of the biggest things that I had to like adjust to was walking around campus because like back in Saudi Arabia, um, I had to literally like, you know, it's like we'd go in cars everywhere, very little concept of public transport and literally just like, you know, one car to like, you know, another like building, very close environments. You know, you don't really get to walk a lot. So over here, when I came over here, so like, you know, walking literally just like 10 minutes to my to my, you know, to any other building for my classes was like such a big change for me. But it was something I actually really, really enjoyed doing because, um, you know, I could see like the scenery, I could see people. And I actually had to use Google Maps to get to literally all of my classes. And I'm so grateful that Google Maps exists. Otherwise, I would have been probably late to a lot of, you know, my first classes. So that was that was pretty cool. Uh, what about you guys? I feel like for me, definitely, like you said, transportation, but the biggest one was the weather. So I feel like it's no stranger for anyone that Canada is a cold country um, in the winters. So definitely it was something I had to adapt to. Um, I am from Honduras, which is a very tropical, warm country. I feel like I've said that a ton of times before. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, um, but it's very warm. So for me, when uh, it got to like 18, 19, 20 degrees, I was freezing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coldest weather. Like I was wearing a hoodie and then I saw like my friends wearing t-shirts and being like, it's summer season. So definitely something I had to adapt to. But that being said, I feel like with the weather, your body tends to adapt pretty easily. So now I feel like after the winters, when it's like around April and the weather starts getting warmer and you know it's like 13 or 14 degrees i am sweating guys like i am wearing a hoodie and i am sweating and i was like i didn't have a 14 degree weather back home so definitely a big change um and for all those who are scared about it do not worry trust me when i say your body adapts to it always the first days of cold in the fall will always hit hard but then after that you'll be able to adapt to it fairly easily but yeah what about you it's it's true, you know, like it's that's one fantastic thing about uh, human beings, how quickly we adapt to different things, especially the weather. And I could definitely vouch for, you know, the switch from being in a tropical paradise, whether it be Honduras or Trinidad, or even being in France in the matter, because when I used to live in France, we never experienced the winters as harsh as uh, those ex that we experience here. But as you rightfully said, we do adapt and it's a matter of time before the four months pass and we're into spring and the birds are chirping and the trees are blooming and you know how the poetry goes. Um, so for me, it was adjusting, definitely adjusting to a new financial routine and a new system of currency. Being a student, knowing how much to save and when to save, what should be my priority for spending and especially being away from my family as a support system, that was like, those were the most challenging things. And you know, when it comes to my family, having them close by was a luxury that was not easily replaceable. But, you know, thanks to technology, I've been able to, to maintain a really close connection with them, even though we're separated by uh, thousands of miles. So what about you, Rania and Claudia? How did you find balance? Uh, what really helped you to adjust to this new culture, to this new Canadian culture? I would say that there were a lot of things that, um, help me find balance from like my instructors, my TAs, my friends, my family back home. But I feel like the first thing that helped me, you know, make that transition from that homesickness into finding that balance with my new life was changing my mindset. So what I mean is when you come to a new culture and everything is so different to what you're usually um, like you're used to, definitely it might come as a shock and you can put yourself in a position where you are maybe close-minded or you are not as open to you know the changes and the opportunities that are presented so definitely foremost before everything and anything i would say that finding balance is, is about, all about like all of that inner um mentality that you have so definitely come with an open mind see this as the great opportunity that it is it is an opportunity where you can get to meet so many new people. New Waterloo is a great place to meet people from all over the world. We have a 21% um, of undergraduate students that are international from all over the world. So definitely you will be able to learn something, make some new friends. And yeah, I feel like uh, summarizing it up, definitely finding balance for me, it was all about changing my mindset. What about you, Rania?
Um, okay, for me, okay, like I see a lot of the people down in the chats, you know, connecting to each other and asking, are, are there like any groups on Facebook or like WhatsApp and whatever. So actually I joined this WhatsApp group that was like a U Waterloo 2024 students. Um, and over there I was interacting with a lot of people. So usually I'm the one who walks up to people and introduces myself. But when I came to Waterloo, all my friends individually kind of found me and they came up to me. And what I ended up doing is that I ended up putting all of us together into a group. So I think one of the cool things was that um, I we because four out of five of us were international students. One of us was um, a local student, a national student. So. Um, you know, we kind of uh, all had to learn a lot of things the, the hard way, but what made the hard way easier to get through was that you could look to your left or look to your right and you'd see your friends going through exactly the same thing. So you were never alone in any of your, um, you know, you were never, you were never alone in any of your, you know, transitions or adjustments. And I think that was one thing that really, really helped me settle in. Absolutely, that's fantastic. So, as you mentioned, as you, um, as our international students might um, realize, it's actually 10 a.m. for us. This is where we actually are supposed to stop, but we are continuing on because we love you so much and we want to provide you as much with as much in, much information as possible to make sure that your transition is as smooth and comfortable. And speaking of transition, uh, transitioning from one environment to the next, I'll speak about my experience. So. I mentioned a couple of uh, about 10 to or 15 minutes ago that I joined the Caribbean Students Association in my first year, kind of by default, because I, I, I was told by one of a couple of my Trinidadian friends that's what that's one of the first things that you do when you uh, come to University of Waterloo. And they really provided me with a sense of being a sense of home, being away from home in a sense. And I'm very much grateful for that. So definitely look into those cultural clubs that are available on campus that you would identify with. And my mom and my brother, I remember in first day, I was really being impatient with myself. And as an international student, you know, we come here and we have this mentality of being a small fish in a huge pond. And you we tend to develop, you know, homesickness on, these, on all these different things. And you know what, that's completely fine and that's okay and that's normal to experience those feelings. So when you do feel like that, when you come here, and let me tell you up front, especially I, Claudia and Rana could probably relate as well, it is going to happen. You are going to feel anxious and everything at first, and that's completely fine. It will be a matter of time before you settle into your new environment, you will be involved in your studies, hopefully extracurricular activities as well. The key is to practice in patience with yourself and you will don't rush that process. That process is not supposed to be from one day to the next. You're going to take a couple of weeks, probably even the first semester to readjust. And you have a lot of resources on campus and online for that matter available to you to make sure that you go through that process as comfortably as possible. And also you have something like the international peer community that we will get into in a short time. So adapting to an a new environment is a gradual process. Do not rush it. You will learn a lot about yourself going through that process. And when you do feel feelings of anxiety, or whatever, just breathe in, and just keep going and you'll be fine. Definitely. Listen to Kieran's advice is a very good one. Um, and you. for, you know, continuing on with that uh, talk about living abroad um we asked you if you have ever lived abroad and if so where um and i received well we received a couple of responses so nandani said yes i did one year of high school in australia tani said i am living in canada and lived here for a year now so okay that's awesome i feel like you have a good um you know transition then you came here in high school so you will be able to like meet some people already i see that nr said live in new york from barbados that's awesome um jada said first time living outside of trinidad so i feel like that will be a nice transition from like a hot tropical weather to a colder one so definitely will be a once in a lifetime experience um amir said i have lived and studied in five different countries because of my dad's job 
that is honestly that's awesome i feel like you've learned so much so definitely um amir let us know what countries you have lived in in the comments i am definitely curious to know and then lastly uh let's see gonzong said 15 days in the uk that is awesome okay and let's see okay so i feel like that's all of the questions or like i mean all of the comments that we have right now but we want to let you know another great way to adjust and to help you in this transition um, and it is being able to connect with others who are going through similar experiences and it is with the international peer community also known as the ipc which is run through the Inter through the student success office also known as the SSO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me tell you more about it. The International Peer Community, uh, also known as the IPC, is more um, as like a peer support program to help new international students feel at home at the University of Waterloo. It's a great way to get to know the campus community better, practice your English, make friends with other international students, and above all, obviously, have fun. So, you know, um, also, by the way, all their uh, events have transitioned online. So no matter whether you'll be on campus or whether you'll be studying from home, you can access IPC's events. Absolutely. And it basically acts as a platform where they, uh, where there are daily events with such a variety of activities to engage in from coffee chats, the games, the pen pals, um, well, establishing pen pal, pen pal connections and also virtual dinner parties and even have contests. Cool. So, um, although we won't be able to physically meet, we can still make new friends and have conversations online. Check out the IPC website for more information about the events and how to register. All righty, fantastic. So, we have some more questions coming in from our lovely audience. So, I will get to those in, uh, once my internet connection allows me to, once again. Yeah, I've had my laptop since since first year, and it's 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 been um it's it's been really put to use this laptop over my undergrad. So let's see if I get those questions. Just give me one second. One second, Louise. Honestly, I'm seeing everyone. I'm I'm seeing everyone connect down in the comments. So it's like pretty cool to see all of you guys like, you know, coming up with your own groups and you know asking each other questions because I think a really good way to connect is to, you know, just peer support, peer to peer support. So yeah, it's pretty exciting to see. So um Zian asked, how do you deal with constant moving during co-op? And uh Yes, so do you guys have any experience with regards to that? So I'm not in co-op, but uh, I do know some friends that are in co-op and they're moving a lot. So I feel like my advice to you is from what I've seen them do is um, basically stay connected with your friends. So if you're having a co-op that is far away and you feel like you're not gonna be able to um, see your friends that much, always connect with them. We have social media like you guys have proven to connect with others no matter where you are in the world. So definitely a great resource is being able to connect with your friends no matter where you are. And there are also co-op resources um, in the university that can help you easy transition. So definitely get in touch with your advisors if you are ever needing any support. Great. And you know, going off of that too, I'm not in co-op, but well, I was not in a co-op program during my undergrad in my international development uh, program. But I had an eighth, seven and a half month international placement in South America in Peru, which is something similar to co-op. And frankly, I loved it. I was there on my own. And the thing is about co-op, it gives you an opportunity to, ex to, to experience and to see whether a particular field is actually for you or not. And that's what is so great about the university's co-op program. It is probably, Probably a bit some of some bias coming from me as a University of Waterloo student, but I think it's known as the best co-op program in Canada, and they do provide you with a lot of networking opportunities. So if you are in a co-op program, that's fantastic. If you're not, that's okay. 
you do have some uh, some students from uh, spring semester, sorry, where you have the opportunity to work. And this is uh, something I wish I had done in my first year is to use my first spring term to to find a job around here, even though I spent a documentary on that, you know, you have a lot of opportunities here to thrive and to find a good job. A good job yeah. So, uh, Rania, we have a question for you, actually, from Jiffin. I hope I said it properly. So, being from the United Arab Emirates, um, they are quite worried about the temperature. So what advice do you have for them, Rania, coming from the United Arab Emirates? Sorry, um, could you repeat that? I, I kind of like cut off a bit, sorry. No worries, I'll just repeat it quickly. Um, Devin asked, being from the United Arab Emirates, I am quite worried about the temperature. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like in Saudi Arabia, um, I actually have, yeah, sorry. Um, like, so basically um, I have family in the UAE as well. And both in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, the temperatures go up to 50 degrees Celsius. So, you know, coming from all the way back to, you know, Canada, where it gets, you know, um, 18 degrees or 20 degrees, like Claudia was mentioning, and she was, she felt cold when she first came. So for the first two, three months, um, it's going to take you, take you some time to adjust to the weather. But um, as soon, so like, obviously, like during fall, the temperature changes a lot. So sometimes it goes cold and sometimes it goes back to being hot. So once it goes back to being hot, your body's going to like just be completely adjusted and it's going to be ready for winter. So I, I wouldn't say worry about it, but prepare for it. Fantastic. So we also have a question from Isha about course selection. How do we select our courses? So your courses could be selected uh, during the stipulated period um, that you'll be receiving in your email. So you'll log into your Quest account with your What I Am credentials, and you will be able to enroll in the course uh, in the courses section. So you go into My Academics and Course Selection. But once again, um, as an incoming first year student, the university will make that process. Uh, will give you a systematic description of how you could go about doing that. Um, do you guys know when Course Selection is for undergraduate students? Because I know it's different for graduate students. I am not sure. Um, there are different uh, dates for incoming students and for returning students, but right. we provided a link for the important dates calendar, um, and it's always and it's also in the registrar's office page. So check the calendar out and also check your email. I'm sure that they sent you um, information with all of the course selection. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so just look out for that email. And we have a question from Aksh yep. with regards to uh, residence life. So for international students, what is the deadline for the residence's refund of $500? So that's a great question. So the Waterloo Residences has answers, the, sorry, the Waterloo Residences website has answers to your frequently asked questions, such as that one on their website. So our Ask Us panelists will post the link in the description below. We know that's not YouTube. They will they will post it in the in the chat. Box. Um, fantastic. So we are going to our grand prize giveaway now as part of today's wrap up, which is a well. Just imagine this is a Canada Goose mug with a fantastic notebook set. So our question for today is: What is your funniest stereotype about Canada that you know about? So an example that we have heard in the past is that Canadians have moose as pets. Whether that is true or not is something that you will come here to see for yourselves. But we want to hear about your answers, so please tell us in the chat. And I am going to be the one who will pick out the winner. So all the pressure is on me. So what about you guys, Claudia and Rania? What other stereotypes that you guys heard about before you were up here? I feel and like. Are they, they true? Oh, sorry. Are they true or not? Okay. Um. I feel like for me, it was like the one that I heard the most was that Canadians were very polite, and it's definitely something true. I find like, for example, even like the smallest mm -hmm. details. I see that people are always opening up the door for you, and you always do that like awkward run so you can get to the door as well. So definitely, yeah. people are very nice. Um, they live up to their name. What about you, Rania? 
Okay, first of all, I agree with you so much because even when people still like sometimes open the door for me, I get so caught off guard by how nice everyone is. So definitely like that one for sure. And I think like one of the stereotypes that I had was that um, winter is absolutely like, it just kills you, right? Like it's super cold. Um, that is actually, that wasn't the case. Like it was pretty cold, but um, the university actually gives you like proper information on how to get to classes safely, um, you know, what shoes to wear so you don't slip on the ice. Um, and honestly, just like they help you out whenever you can buses like operate all the way to your residence um during winter like that happened for rev at least and then it will go all the way back to you know dc or the slc so i think that was like one of the stereotypes that you know i was really scared of and it was partly true winters are harsh but also university of waterloo tells you a really good way to adjust to it and hopefully by 2021 um things regarding like the pandemic and stuff like Hopefully things will get better by that time. So if you guys are on campus during 2021, uh, winter 2021. So I look forward to seeing you guys hopefully adjusting to the cold climate. So at this time, we will go through some of the remaining questions in the Google Doc. Well, sorry, in the what we use as our Google Doc. Uh, Rania, you want to take it away on the questions, the remaining questions? Sure, I can definitely just open the chat right here because there's like quite a few. Just want to make sure that you get all of them correctly. Sure. Um, let me just scroll up a bit. Right, so. Okay, so Isha says, uh, when do we get our instructors slash advisors? Again, everything is on you Waterloo Learn. So as soon as you guys get access to learn, you guys can open up your, um, you know, like your courses. Um, because obviously after you, after course selection, the courses appear on learn, the online training tool. And over there, you guys can like uh, see your instructor's name. Also when you're selecting courses actually on Quest and once they get approved, and they get added to your um, list. You can see the names of like all your um, course advisors, all your instructors and your TAs as well. Um, also, yeah, for regarding uh, academic advisors, you guys can go on the U Waterloo uh, like a website and just search in like your program and then add uh, academic advisor in front of it. And then it'll give you a list of all the academic advisors according to your program and year. Um, Josh says, do we need to, worry about the fee deadline that is today yes because um if you for example don't pay by the fee deadline um you get charged um a late additional fee so in order to like avoid that i'd say pay all your fees on time because for me personally tra uh, getting like the money transferred all the way to canada because I was like still in um, Saudi Arabia by the time that I had to get my fees uh, travel like sent to Canada. So it takes four days internationally. So I'd suggest like send in your fee four days in advance. Um, yeah. So. Rania, I'm just going to say something. I believe the yeah. fee deadline, that one's for spring. Like the one that's due today oh, is right. for spring. So, yeah. So the right, fall right, deadline right. is August 25th. Sam is right. Mm -hmm. um, the Today, I believe it's like the. If I'm not correct, like it's yes, it's for spring. Yes. So students that are studying right now in spring that are completing courses online, mm -hmm. they have yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry for the person I gave a heart attack to. No, it's okay. I I, I was I, at first I was like, oh my gosh, wait, so soon? Yeah, it's for the spring term. My bad. My my bad. Because oh, I was like, wait a second, fall today, and I'm like. I have no idea. Maybe it's like different for international students. Yeah, no, definitely. No, you had me asking myself some questions as well. I said, <laughs> wait, June 30th, boy? That's when he, that's what he said. I was like, nah, that's not then. Well, thank you, Claudia, for the clarification. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, no, that, that seems kind of wrong. Yeah, huh? thank you, Claudia. No problem. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have some great entries for the giveaway. <laughs> And we will go through our answers. Are you guys ready to laugh a bit, Rania and Claudia? Let's do it. 
I am ready. Nice. Um, okay. Okay. So, note by now says a boot. They don't say about the cell boot. Mm, okay. That's uh, that's definitely something that I that we uh, that you could hear definitely a different intonation. Tani says everyone is too nice. I don't, I don't think it could be too nice. Could be too nice. So, the winter weather from Nandish. Ayan said geese. Ambush said money smells like maple syrup. Lol. That made me lol a bit. Isha <laughs> said they are afraid of the dark. Anmo said Canadians are super nice. Arnav says Canadians say sorry in every sentence. From Josh, um, Josh, sorry, says everyone says E and a boot again. Natalie says live, drink, breathe maple syrup. Wow. Mokun says, um, sorry, where is Mokun? Mokun's answer says, sorry, Mokun says, I've heard that Alberta is basically called Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny one. Natalie says bathe in the bathe in maple syrup. Priyanshi says freedom. Canada is a land of freedom. Uh, okay. Stefan says they eat everything with maple syrup. Everything. Kyle says everyone is nice, too nice. Hani says that everyone lives in igloos. I don't think I live like it. Like I don't think we live in igloos. I don't, I don't think <laughs> this is an igloo, you guys. <laughs> um, Tanisha says that they are too helpful and friendly. Sas Saksham says he met some Canadians in Japan. They said it is a boring country. Is that <laughs> true? And not I will true. answer you in Japanese. I will say "ie," which means no, that's not true. <laughs> I would definitely say that's not true. Zion says Canadians apologize for to the wall if they run into one. <laughs> yes, that's that. very true. And actually, you could see it. Uh, actually, I'll get to that after. Priyanshi says people are very sweet. Karen says Canadians are super sweet and helpful. Bhavna says that they are all about that maple syrup. Um, Mokun says BC has more bears than people. <laughs> Karen <laughs> says you can see moose everywhere. Tani says that Canadians only eat maple syrup. And Chloe says Canadians, Canadian geese are wild. Da, 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 da. Uh, Christine yeah. says that every Canadian is addicted to Tim Hortons. Oh. Mm. Priyanka says that Canada is an igloo with maple syrup. All right. So I'm going to ask, so this sounded like a National Geographic documentary on the Canadians. Um, so Claudia, Ronya, is there one that, that stuck out to you? Oh. Okay, I'll have to go with like the one that said like Alberta is just like cold Texas. That was yeah. That was funny. Yeah. I feel like I'll say the igloo one because that was awesome. Honestly, I would want to live in an igloo. I feel like right now with thirty degrees outside, it would be kind of hard. But yeah, I love that one. This is like not an igloo. Oh, nice view. I wake so, up with this. So thank you so much for your fantastic answers. Those were great. But I have picked one winner. And I have to give it to Mukund, who said, I've heard that Alberta is basically called Texas. That was, that really made me lol, but really, really hard. So Mukund, congratulations on winning your Canadian uh, Canada Goose Mug and your notebook that will be provided to you. Uh, please private us, sorry, private message or ask us panelists with your email address so we can send the prize your way or what will most likely happen actually in this context is that when you come to Canada, you'll be able to pick it up from the student success office. So we look forward to giving you a prize, Mukun. Congratulations, that was a fantastic answer. Okay. <laughs> So, our second live chat has come to an end, and as always, we want to know if you found this helpful. So, when you uh, exit the live chat, there will be a survey that will pop off. So, fill it out and let us know your feedback, what you think, and so we can um, all work it out for our third live chat, which will be going on next week on Tuesday, July 7th. It'll be our third and final live chat. 
So definitely join us there. Um, yeah, and for more information, all of the links will be posted by the Ask Us panelist right now. But it was awesome having Keelan as our new host today. It was so My fun. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So I'll, we'll see you guys next week then. Thank you. Everybody's saying thank you. Thank you, guys. Au revoir. Ciao. Adios. <laughs> thank you guys for coming. And happy Canada Day. Oh, yes. Happy, you forgot yes. about that. Yeah. Happy Canada Day. Happy Canada Day from me and the orca. On my shoulder. I'll pretend I have something Canadian here right now. My cap, especially for the slide chat. <laughs> All cool. right, great job, guys. I see that everyone had a good time. I love Happy it. Happy Canada Day, Oprah. Oh, oh. Hola, Laura. Oh, yes. I saw, I vi tu comentario earlier before. Hi. Laura asked me from the DR, I believe, said to say something in Spanish. Hola. Um, Keelan knows Spanish as well, right, Keelan? Claro que sí, podemos bailar bachata cuando podamos. Sí, aquí. Yay, see?